Episode 5 begins with a flashback where Leo was still a gladiator knight participating in the kingdom's annual event to find the strongest individuals. Leo, who easily defeated his opponents, was predicted to become the champion at that time. However, little did anyone know that Max also took part in the gladiator battle before he met Leo and before the hero party was formed. One day, Max suddenly felt the urge to go out for a walk to avoid boredom at home. The Demon King pleaded with Max to take him for a stroll, and they set off initially for a casual walk. However, the Demon King asked Max to accompany him while shopping for clothes. When he sought Max's advice on what clothes to buy, Max, feeling uncomfortable in that situation, thought that everything the Demon King tried on looked suitable for him. Max became uncertain about the Demon King's appearance when disguised as a beautiful woman, making him wonder if the Demon King was a man or a woman. The Demon King, considering it doesn't matter, added to Max's confusion. The store staff, witnessing the Demon King seeking clothing advice, suggested that he should try them on first, which led the Demon King to playfully tease Max by pretending they were a couple shopping for their child. The store staff assumed them as husband and wife on a shopping spree. After purchasing the clothes, they had lunch at a restaurant inside the mall. The demon flew by, and it was already almost evening when they decided to shop for dinner. The Demon King offered Max to request any dish he wanted for dinner. As Max was pondering over his dinner choice, the Demon King noticed a small stand where a woman was offering free samples of sausage products sold in the supermarket. The woman recognized Max as a hero and expressed her gratitude for meeting him in person. At first, Max was indifferent, and he shook hands with the woman when she invited him to do so. However, during the handshake, Max realized the woman's true identity, as he was well aware of individuals engaged in disguises. The woman turned out to be Leo's subordinate, who was now a member of the Gamma Republic. The Demon King, curious about the woman, was left behind as Max asked her to go home first. The Demon King became upset as he saw Max leaving with the woman. While in the employee locker room, Max inquired about what Leo's subordinate was doing in the city center of the kingdom. The subordinate casually replied that they were just strolling around or, more accurately, conducting reconnaissance. Meanwhile, the Demon King, who was waiting for Max in front of the mall, was approached by a large-bodied man. The man invited the disguised Demon King to meet with Max and didn't make a big issue out of it if the Demon King refused. However, he issued a veiled threat that if the Demon King didn't comply, they would prevent him from meeting Max again. Max was engaged in conversation with Leo's female subordinate, whom he hadn't seen in five years, as they were separated two years prior due to Leo and his group rebelling against the kingdom. The woman was still diligently training and understood why Max's hands had become rough, as he hadn't practiced much lately. Max then changed the subject and inquired about Leo's current well-being. According to the woman, Leo was still full of energy and curious about Max's current situation since they hadn't met in five years. She noticed that Max's words still showed concern for Leo, despite their rebellion. Meanwhile, the Demon King, being escorted by the large man, realized that he was also Leo's subordinate, whom they referred to as a terrorist. The man got angry at the Demon King's words, as they were hurt by the treatment that led Leo to be isolated in a desolate place and rebel against the kingdom. The Demon King asked if the man would recruit Max to help with a rebellion. The man saw Max, the retired hero, as someone who would just bring more uncles to the Gamma Republic. Angered by the man's words, the Demon King mockingly claimed that Max could defeat him in just two seconds. However, Max was still conversing with Leo's female subordinate, explaining his situation when Fred asked him to protect the kingdom from Leo's rebellion. The woman understood Max's predicament, knowing he would decline Fred's invitation, but she hoped that Max would genuinely accept her offer to join Leo's cause. Max might consider it, but for now, he chose to politely decline. The man, known as Will, took the disguised Demon King to become a member of the Gamma Republic, but Leo's female subordinate got angry and threatened him recklessly. Will's behavior became more arrogant, leading Max to get angry and, as expected, he managed to throw Will into the ocean in just two seconds. Feeling unable to swim and almost drowning, the woman rescued him and pulled him back onto the pier. She apologized for Will's reckless actions 
and Max forgave her, understanding that he still had a lot to learn. They both left Max and the Demon King to avoid detection by the kingdom, as they would be captured if their movements were discovered. The Demon King offered Max to join Leo, but if he agreed, they would have to fight against Fred. Then he invited the Demon King to go back home together. In the morning, the woman, along with Will, returned by speedboat to a relatively large ship where Joe, one of Leo's subordinates, was already waiting. The woman knew that Leo was on the ship, but he was not currently inside. Then, there was a splash of water, and it turned out that Leo was out hunting fish for a meal they would share. Meanwhile, Max was curious about the tickets and tried to search for them online. He found out that the ticket prices were very expensive, which made him eager to sell them. The Demon King expressed regret about selling the tickets and suggested why they didn't just use them to go there. Max, feeling that he had obtained the tickets, believed he was free to sell them since he had no interest in going. Moreover, considering the area was considered a terrorist zone, he became even more reluctant to force himself to go, as it could put him in danger, and he might not return safely. However, the Demon King had already prepared an emergency teleportation portal in case anything went wrong and continued to insist that Max should go with him. The Demon King then called Xania to take care of the house while they were away and used his illusion magic to make Max agree to go with him, all while monitoring the situation in the Gamma Republic. Once they were on the flying ship, Max finally snapped out of the Demon King's illusion magic. He was truly at a loss about what to do and decided it was best to just go along with the Demon King's plan. After arriving at their destination, Max informed the Demon King that many of Leo's subordinates would recognize him, making it dangerous for him to come without a disguise. The Demon King then gave him a silly pair of glasses and fake teeth to conceal his identity. The place they visited was famous for its vast open-air hot springs. They were offered a local specialty dish and were practically forced by the locals to eat everything. Max and the Demon King were soaking their feet in the hot spring while discussing why the Gamma Republic didn't appear to be a terrorist hotspot. According to Max, the Republic's clever use of tourist routes and well-organized facilities allowed them to quickly accumulate funds. The Demon King's perception of the Gamma Republic being an evil place was refuted by Max, who explained that it wasn't about whether a country was good or evil, but rather the circumstances that caused the conflicts. The kingdom regarded the Republic as a source of their problems. The Demon King playfully responded to Max's serious discussion, finding humor in his comical appearance. Max then inquired about the Demon King's involvement in human conflicts. The Demon King passionately stated that taking advantage of these conflicts would make it easier for him to conquer the human world again. He believed that if Max joined either Leo or Fred's side and they fought against each other, it would benefit the Demon Clan since the division among the hero party couldn't be avoided. Max sarcastically responded to the Demon King's expectations, unable to fulfill them. Later, they observed a group of tourists witnessing Leo and his party doing something near the hot springs. The woman who offered them food explained Leo's method of lowering the hot springs' temperature for bathing, as it would be too intense to bathe directly from the source. When mixed with water, the temperature became tolerable. Max understood Leo's fondness for the hot spring in its natural state before it was tempered, and he saw it as them simply having fun. He felt that Leo hadn't changed much since their first encounter in the Gladiator Arena. During the Gladiator competition, Max became a finalist and faced Leo as his opponent. Leo questioned Max about his determination to fight against the Demon King's kingdom. The intense battle began, with Max giving his all, and they both fought fiercely, leaving them exhausted. In the end, Max emerged as the winner by successfully disarming Leo's sword. They were both happy to have faced such a formidable opponent.